स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू आई होप एवरीबडी इज फाइन टूडे साइंस टू दैट इज बायोलॉजी प्रेजेंटिंग फॉर यू इज मिस चित्रा फ्रॉम नलेनाडर मेट्रिक हायर सेकेंडरी स्कूल डू यू लाइक एनिमल्स ऑफ कोर्स एवरी वन लाइक एनिमल्स हियर आई हैव ब्रॉट यू अ लॉट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट एनिमल्स All animals on the earth come under a largest group called animal kingdom. This largest group is divided into two groups namely invertebrata and vertebrata. The animals which do not have backbone are called invertebrates. They are also known as non-chordates. The animals which have backbone are called vertebrates they are also known as chordates in this class we are going to learn about different groups of invertebrate animals the group invertebrata is classified into eight phyla namely phylum porifera phylum coelenterata phylum platyhelminthes phylum askelminthes phylum annelida phylum arthropoda phylum mollusca and phylum echinodermata i repeat porifera coelenterata platyhelminthes ask helminthes annelida arthropoda mollusca and echinodermata let us now learn one by one in detail before going into the lesson we should know some base basic terms they are diploblastic and triploblastic if the animal has two germ layers namely ectoderm and endoderm then they are called diploblastic animals if the animal has three germ layers such as ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm then that animals are called triploblastic animals here coelenterates and platyhelminthes come under diploblastic animals all other groups such as askelminthes annelida arthropoda mollusca and echinodermata come under triploblastic animals now the next term is coelom coelom means body cavity fluid filled cavity if an animal do not have body cavity means such animal is called a coelomate animal if an animal has proper body cavity within the mesoderm means it is known as coelomate or u coelomate animal some animals the body cavity may be formed between endoderm and mesoderm such animals are called pseudo coelomate animals phylum platyhelminthes there is no coelom that's why they are a coelomate animals phylum askelminthes come under pseudo coelomate animals because they have false coelom others annelids arthropods mollusca and echinodermata are called coelomate animals they have true coelom now the next term is symmetry based on the symmetry all the invertebrate animals are classified into three categories they are 
asymmetrical, bilateral symmetrical and radially symmetrical. If the animal can be divided into two equal halves by one plane means such animals are called bilaterally symmetrical. If the animal can be divided into two equal halves through many plane means such animals are called radially symmetrical. If the animal cannot be divided into two equal halves then that animals are called asymmetrical. Sponges are asymmetrical. Silentirates and echinoderms are radially symmetrical. Platyhelminthes, Askhelminthes, Annelida, Arthropoda and Mollusca come under radially symmetrical. Now let us see the first phylum Porifera. The general characteristics of Porifera are they are multicellular and non-motile. Multicellular means made up of many cells. Non-motile means they cannot move. They are aquatic organisms. They exhibit cellular level of organization. They are also known as pore bearers. Their body is supported by a skeletal structure called spicules. They have a special structure called canal system. They reproduce by sexual as well as asexual method. In this picture, you can see lot of pores on a sponge body. The presence of pores is called perforation. The minute pores on the surface of the body is called ostia. Here again you can see the ostia as well as one more structure called osculum. The osculum is a large opening at the top. During the canal system, the water enters into the ostia and come out through the osculum. When the water is circulated by the canal system, the animal absorb oxygen as well as food materials from the water. Now this picture shows the skeletal structure of the sponges or the poriferan animals. The skeletal structure of porifera are called spicules. The examples for porifera is cycon sponge and euplectella. Now let us see the second phylum, Coelenterata. The general characteristics of the phylum Coelenterata are multicellular, aquatic organisms, mostly they are marine but few are freshwater forms. They exhibit tissue grade of organization. They are radially symmetrical and diploblastic animals. The unique characteristics of coelenterates are presence of mesoglia, tentacles, stinging cells called nematocysts. The examples are hydra and jellyfish. In this pictures you can see the radial symmetrical structure as well as the diploblastic nature. And the presence of mesoglia between ectoderm and endoderm. Another unique characters, uh, characteristic of a silentirate animal is presence of silentiran. Silentiran means body cavity. They have a f finger like projections around the mouth called tentacles. The tentacles are used to catch the prey as well as for locomotion. The tip of the tentacles contain a specialized cells called stinging cells.
The stinging cells are called nidoblast or nematocysts. They are used to paralyze the prey when the animal catch. The next feature exhibited by cylindrate animal is polymorphism. Here, this picture shows a polymorphism. The polymorphism is a unique characteristic of cylindrates. Polymorphism means an individual exists in two forms with different functions. In Hydra, one form is polyp and another form is medusa. Polyp is attached form and reproduce asexually, but the medusa is free floating and reproduce bisexually. Now, let us see the third phylum, Platyhelminthus. Platyhelminthus means, Platy means flat, Helminthus means worms. The flat worms come under the group Platyhelminthus. They are bilaterally symmetrical, diploblastic, acelomate animals. Mostly they are parasite. They may be ectoparasite or endoparasite. They live on or in others' body, other living organisms. Suckers and hooks are useful for attachment. They excrete through a specialized cells called flame cells. They are hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodite means both the male and female sexes are found in the same animal. Example, liver fluke and tapeworms. In this picture, you can see how the tapeworm is as well as suckers and hooks. Okay, children. See you again in the next class. Thank you.